the eight-legged appearance of spiders might send a shiver down your spine, but it turns out that these ancient arachnids are actually amazing animals. We're going to debunk a few of the spider myths and find out some fascinating facts about New Zealand's native spiders. It's a sheet web webbing I can see over here. In the hollow of the tree here, you can see it stretches right across. It's one of the few spiders that builds a horizontal web, and it has all these threads above it which insects come along, hit, hit those, and then fall onto the sheet webbing. Oh, okay, so it's almost like a net that he yeah, catches. Yeah, and then the spider will sit underneath the webbing during the night and come out and catch anything that falls onto it. And so they're nocturnal, so nocturnal we wouldn't expect spiders, to see it there today. today. During the day she'd be hiding right up underneath the bits of um, tree there. So this is a vagrant spider, which is one of the ground hunting spiders that lives under logs only in the bush. Does it have a web or does it just no, wander? No, it's purely a hunting spider. There's over, probably over 4,000 different types of spider in New Zealand, but there's only 1,500 been studied enough to give them scientific names. Most of the ones you see around your homes are probably introduced spiders, mainly from Australia. But out in, out in the bush, a lot of them are very small spiders. Some of the ones we talked about earlier are, are the bigger ones, like the sheet web spiders that live in those flat horizontal webs out in the bush. And then there's the, um, a lot of hunting spiders, the jumping spiders. There's the water spiders, the ones that are able to live on the shores of rivers and are able to go underneath the water for a few minutes, taking down a big bubble of air with them. And the nursery web spiders, which are the ones you obviously see the little nurseries, often on gorse bushes on the sides of the road, shrubs in your garden, that sort of thing. And that spider is just um, using that as a protection for her young spiderlings before they hatch out. What are some of the myths about spiders that really annoys you as a scientist? The biggest myth is the daddy long legs being the most poisonous spider in the world. They can bite and they have very little venom. The other one, of course, is the white tail, the one you always get asked about. The white tail spider is an introduced spider that can bite and is around our houses. Most people who get bitten have no effects whatsoever. Those that do, it's probably something more to do with that person themselves reacting to it, or else it's a secondary infection which you can get from any wound, and a spider bite is just like any other wound. Grace Hall certainly loves her spiders, and having met some of her mates, I can see why. No humans have died as a result of a spider bite in over a hundred years. So perhaps instead of being frightened of these beautiful creatures, we should be in awe of them. Because as it turns out, they can be fantastic parents, incredible athletes, and they have technology that even NASA can't match. Ooh, ah, where, 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 where,